Hello and welcome back to the Flat Chat Sim Racing Podcast. On this episode, we speak with iRacing NASCAR stream sensation and Marcus Ambrose driver training video series creator, Kevin O'Keefe. This is the Eight Scarps. The Flat Chat Podcast V8 Scott's Edition. The Flat Chat Podcast V8 Scott's Edition. 2019! So, like I mentioned, we have our very first international guest with us tonight, and that, of course, is excluding sim racing commentary mastermind Jake Sperry, as his desire to be a token Aussie is actually even stronger than half of the driver lineup over there at New Zealand Sim Racing. Hey, Hazza! Uh, you may not have expected that comment, but um, we're not sheepish? <laughs> Sorry, overseas listeners, that was a reference to the unique relationship New Zealanders have with their woolly little friends, and they do give us crap back for the same thing, so all's fair in love and war. Anyway, uh, moving back on track, Kevin O'Keefe has been sim racing ever since NASCAR 2003 was released. He was actually one of the first ever iRacing streamers with video content dating back to 2012. Now, had a massive stream success when he covered his entire official iRacing NASCAR series campaign back in 2014. Since then, Kevin has grown a successful podcast titled Forced Feedback, found on iTunes, Stitcher, and other great podcast venues, and his latest venture is named The Warm-Up Lap on YouTube, and that'll combine sim racing content creators from all the major series in the world in one central hub, and also, it'll play host to an incredibly impressive video driving tutorial series with none other than two-time V8 Supercar champion and Aussie NASCAR export and NASCAR race winner, Marcus Ambrose. Kevin O'Keefe, please make yourself welcome, and thank you very much for joining us on the show. Hey, thank you for having me. Uh, Just a quick note there. So the podcast was originally called The Rutgers Kev Show. It's now called Forced Feedback. So if you search uh, iTunes or anything for Forced Feedback, you'll find it. Uh, But the Sim Racing Network is called The Warm-Up Lap. The podcast just kind of a show on on the network. No, that's great, and definitely implore anyone out there to check out those particular podcasts and, and content um, bits of content you have there. And um, it is a pleasure to have you on, mate. Uh, now, one of the reasons that you're on the show is to let everyone know about this particular new hub, the Warm Up Lab, and it's going to be a really fantastic place that video creators can get uh, exposure for different series around the world because we all do tend to get stuck in our little bubble. And that is a particular point I wanted to bring up before we get chatting. And I, I know that there's so much more to talk about, but just want to mention one name, which is Marcus Ambrose. Everyone Woo. in Australia, yeah, especially Chris, yep. as a massive fanboy, <laughs> everyone knows Marcus Ambrose. Uh, he is, uh, to say he's a legend is definitely understating it here in our part of the world. Um, now, there's a method to my madness to bring this uh, particular topic up first, which is our audience is really focused on the V8 supercar series. I'd even say it has a local following that's comparable to almost a religious way that NASCAR fans go about their fandom. And we would love to hear about what's going on with Marcus Ambrose. You've linked up with him and these couple of video tutorials you've already got out on YouTube are blowing my mind when I'm watching them to hear Marcus's voice talking with you about what he's doing on track. What's the future of this particular venture with Marcus Ambrose? Because, mate, we're all really excited to hear about this. Well, I'm very excited to have him on the on the program. But basically, um, I'll give you the little rundown. The whole point of the podcast from the very start is to grow the hobby of sim racing. And the idea was I wanted to do it from the perspective of uh, content creators. Because let's face it, the iRacing marketing department doesn't really do a great job. It's really up to us to spread the word about iRacing. So... Uh, As a former content creator at the time myself, I am back to doing streaming and stuff like that now. I wanted to have on all the people that reach out, do the um, basically the marketing for iRacing. So the guests on my show included, you know, you have to you have to be a YouTube or a Twitch person to know these people. But I had um, I had Empty Box on. I had Matt Malone. uh, I had a lot of the um, of the commentators on from race spot tv i had a great episode with gsrc where we talked about all the work that goes into broadcasting these races i really don't think people appreciate all the work that goes into and how little that they get in return for their work yeah so that was basically the point of the podcast and then um through that uh marcos uh, listened to the podcast and he liked it and he reached out to me and said hey i just want to let you know that you're that you're doing a good job keep up the good work. And it was like, oh, great. You know, that's nice to hear. And then just recently he said, uh, okay, well, I see you're back doing the YouTube stuff. I'd like to help out. 
So he wants to grow the hobby of sim racing just like me. And he wants to get new members because he signs up for these races and he sees like, you know, a thousand or so people online. And he's like, you know, this is, this, um, this platform of iRacing is just too good to have so few people on it. So, so he, mm-hmm. you know, this is basically all like his, his idea. I, you know, I'm just the, I'm just the medium that he's going through, but the series is called sim race like a pro. Uh, Marcus wanted to call it race like a pro, but I put sim in there. So, so for the, so for the clicks, so when people search sim racing, right? Yeah. But, um, we are going to be doing just an overall series. Like the topics are kind of free flowing, um, about, you know, just different concepts basically, um, to try to get people up to speed, try to get people faster. And if you're a new member of even just sim racing in general or iRacing, it can really help you. And if you're a longtime member of iRacing, it also helps you as well. So we started at Brands Hatch because I struggle there and he's a driving instructor there and he spent 90 minutes with me going over Brands Hatch, which was just amazing because I expected him to maybe do 20 minutes. And then we went over to Kentucky and talked about oval racing and uh, we have recorded other episodes uh, that haven't been released yet. So look forward to that. And then the big announcement that just happened this week is that Marco saw me doing the Daytona 24 hours and he said that looked like a lot of fun. And his his mates over there in Australia were all excited about it. So he's actually going to do Bathurst 12 hours with me live yes. at the warm-up lab. So it's going to be streamed live. Uh, Marcos is going to be there for for the majority i can't i can't promise for the whole thing because it is in the the middle of the night for him but um i'm gonna have an admin in chat who's gonna be relaying him you know the chat questions and if he wants to respond he's able to respond to the chat room so you can interact with marcos during the race not when he's in the car because he's not he's not really a uh one that likes to talk when he's in the car. But yeah, I mean, so it's just going to be kind of like a uh, event and it's Marcos's first iRacing endurance race. So uh, and trust me, he's fast. <laughs> so I don't doubt uh, that. <laughs> I've, I got a lot to live up to. I don't doubt that. I mean, he was in, what was it? He won two championships in Australia in our main series, the V8 Supercars. And, and the other two main series that he ran, um, he was third. So <laughs> <laughs> we definitely know he's got pace. And uh, JC, don't take him out, mate. Well, he, we might be in the same split, Kevin. You, you uh, Marcus, and my little uh, team, we're called the, what are we called? Hyper pleb, hyper speds. We're not very good, but <laughs> look, we'll be there and we'll do our best not to, especially not to come anywhere near Marcus, near the cutting. Hey, Kessie. Mate, I'll, just, you like, know what? I'm supposed to be, you know, somewhat managing that team. And I think I might be going for you guys, Kevin. To be honest, <laughs> well, what's the I rating of the You're, person that's going to sign up? Uh, uh, no idea. Be around around two k, I think. Two, two, two. <laughs> yeah, okay, probably. You guys are probably, probably a lot higher than well, that. Well, I'm at twenty nine hundred. I'm probably going to sign up. I mean, we also have uh, Billy Smith is a supporter on the show. Was a recent guest on the podcast. He's a, he has a five k I rating. So he he's our he's our third driver. But we haven't we haven't really decided who's going to sign up. Okay, well look, if you do at the two point nine, I might go have to go and do about uh, twenty Mazda MX five races, and I'll, I'll see how we go. <laughs> you can farm it, go. mate. Farm farm well. Uh, there's no there's no doubt I'll be checking <laughs> that out, mate. I, I'm, I'm a as I said before, I'm a huge Marcus Ambrose fan, and I, I would love to see how you guys go, and definitely hear some of the tips that he has to um, give out to the. To the community, to uh, all across the world. I suppose that's a good thing about having someone like Marcus Ambrose who's done racing all around the world. Well, yeah. How good is uh, video? Um, I just wanted to say that we just watched that just before, uh, Kevin. The one I was watching the one at Kentucky, and the feedback that Marcus has is really unique from what I've heard. Now, we have heaps of these driving schools out there, VRS. We have a TTL, which is a race team here in Australia who uh, had their own coaching school. There's Pure Racing School. There's there's quite a few out there. But the feedback and the particular information that Marcus was giving when you were talking to him was really like a real driver's information. The weight shift and the way that you're supposed to feel the grip on the track, it wasn't just about pedal inputs and stuff like that and what you're seeing. He was talking from a real driver's perspective and we've got plenty of real-world drivers on our racing, but his particular information really resonated with me. So to see what he does in the 12-hour and to see more videos, yeah, I mean, saying all that, have you got uh, any anything you'd like to say about what is going to be coming up for the new videos that are coming for this uh, particular series you're running? 
Well, we're, we're, we are recording this for me. It would be Monday morning. So Tuesday night for me, Marcus and I are doing a Bathurst trap, track guide. Oh, That's going to be out this week. That is unbelievable. I'm going to be watching that for sure. Yep. You need to, mate. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, I will say just, just going back on what you said about the schools and stuff like that, I just, I think that. I think that this is all good. I don't think there's like one, mm. I don't think there's one proper way of learning, you know, and um, Marcos, yeah. uh, Marcos talks about concepts and stuff, especially breaking. If you look at the Brands Hatch video, that it's not a one-to-one direct application to what he's talking about, to what these um, sim racers do that are in the world championship series. Uh, because the sim, if you're in the world championship series, you have to game it because this is a, uh, this is a game, right? So if you're mm. in the World Championship Series, you have to play the game the the best way how. And the best way how may not transfer one-to-one to like real-life driving. But so if but if you take Marcus's concepts and you start to apply them, you know, you then you'll be a better driver throughout all sims. And that's really the idea. Yeah. And in real life. Yeah, definitely. I've always uh, been of the opinion that a racing driver given any circumstance will try and do whatever that driver can do to be as fast as possible. And I don't think think that a sim racing game is any exception. So if you had a car that, let's say, behaved in a certain way and that driver had to manipulate the car through, let's say, some more unorthodox means, of course they're going to do that just to go as fast as they can. And on the sim, same thing, because most drivers that come on they want to be as fast as they possibly can. Uh, personally, I like the the immersion of feeling the kind of experience as if I was in a real car. I try. I mean, that's probably my excuse for not being fast. But <laughs> but um, no, you're right. I mean, I I really look forward to all the all the videos that Marcus brings out. And again, I have to say, it cannot be underestimated how massive Marcus's fan base here in Australia is. So. If this is the first time that anyone listening to this um, has heard about this video, please go and check it out. There's two already up. Like you say, Kevin, there'll be a third one up by the time this one comes out for Bathurst 2. But uh, yeah, the scope of of this and what this means, uh, having Marcus Ambrose kind of teaching uh, drivers of how he would get around a track is, I mean, it is second to none in my opinion. I can't wait to see more. But um, mate, moving on from from Marcus, and maybe we can touch on him in a little bit. Um, the hub that you've created with the warm up lap, can you tell us a little bit more about that and what that's going to involve for for this year and in the years to come? Is this something that you know? What's your vision for this particular project that you've got here with the warm up lap? Well, the YouTube algorithm kind of buries a lot of uh, low tier streamers, and I actually just found out this week that they actually can't monetize unless they unless they get a thousand subs. Now I have I have six thousand four hundred subs, so I've I so I'm established, and it's just kind of like there's a lot of people out there that make really good content that have like fifty subs, and it's just kind of like not fair, you know. So the idea is that I'm using my platform. I'm going to like host uh, certain um, certain content creators, whether whether they're streamers or whether they're people that make track guides or setup guides or just uh, audio visual guides. Like um, we have um, Ibog on the show and he's the one that makes the overlays that you see on, on, on broadcasts. Yes. Yep. So he's going to be doing a guide to how you can use, so you can set those up so that you could be a broadcaster. Right. Or if you just want to show a race with your mates and stuff like that, like you can make it look more professional. Right. So that's the idea. Right. So, 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 so if Ibog hosted that on his channel with his 30 subs or something, it wouldn't get as much exposure as if he hosted it on, 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 on my channel. So how I got big, just to give you a quick background. So I started streaming in 2012 and um, I was popular then. And then in early 2013, the iRacing NASCAR series started. And, um, I became like the go-to guy for the Irish and NASCAR series. And that really got me popular. Well, there's a, there's another streamer called front seat racing and he does the Irish and NASCAR series and he's a teacher. So he does some really, really good job explaining what he's doing and he's entertaining and, uh, he's got the tech. So he's got, he's got this whole setup and he's got the green screen and it, it's, it's a really good show, but unfortunately because he's on a smaller platform because of the way things work you know people just aren't seeing what he's doing so front seat racing is now going to be over and over on my channel 
And then um, the idea is that people enjoy him and go and subscribe to his channel. And then next season, he, you watch him on his channel, right? So the idea is like people, people like come and go. They like, they like float in and out. So that's the idea. Like I'm going to be using my platform to get some exposure to uh, people who are putting out good content, but may not be able to be seen. Sure. Well, that's uh, thank you, thank you for doing that for anyone of us that, that create content. And I mean, Australia and New Zealand have quite a few uh, well-known content creators in our region. Um, some of them are more international too. Emily Jones springs to mind. She has been uh, doing iRacing racing con- uh, streaming videos for a while, and she's got a pretty big following. Um, we've got Hobo eighty eight. We've got uh, Mitch McLeod. There's quite a few, yeah, Cassie. And um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've noticed that if you go onto Twitch though and you look up iRacing, it's never really up the top end of the the pyramid as far as the most viewed uh, platform like sim racing. Well, it's uh, kind of very similar to um, when you're actually, uh, I mean, the, the heavy time for um, iRacing itself is the time when there's 40 or 50 people up on Twitch, um, which would be the American 6, 7 p.m. sort of time range. Um, but during our time, the fact that Hobo88 and uh, and Emily Jones do such a great job during the Australian hours is, um, yeah, it's a testament to them. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, well, they're, they're entertaining too. Um, Absolutely. From like Emily is just, uh, you know, she's a, a beautiful girl and she's also very engaging with her audience as well. And then uh, someone like Hobo is really informative. Mitch, um, though I've never met Mitch, I've heard... He loves a VB. <laughs> He's a great bloke. <laughs> and uh, he loves a, he loves a Carlton draft. He doesn't okay. like VB. <laughs> okay, uh, Kevin, that they're they're our our beer over here. Uh, they're the different types of beer we have, and they're <laughs> I'm sure that like our funny is this: we have Corona is one of the higher class import beers in Australia, and apparently that's just a general Mexican, uh, you know, standard beer. But you know, you pay top dollar for a Corona at a bar over here. Yeah, that's <laughs> not that's not top of the line. <laughs> But, and we don't even really drink Fosters. You'd be hard pressed to find a Fosters in a bar, wouldn't you? Impossible. Um, not that. Not that I like it at all. But <laughs> eh, it's not bad. Yeah, <laughs> when you can find it. But um, back to the to the streaming. I wonder, um, Kevin, you've been quite successful. I mean, some of these videos you've put up um, are quite mind blowing. Actually, you've got the Daytona 500 in 2013, 27,000 views. IndyCar 500 to 2016. 31,000 views, another 45,000 uh, views for the Daytona 500 in 2014, and a mind-boggling boggling 175,000 views on a video titled, It's Stuff Like This That Makes You Want to Quit Sim Racing, which I'm sure that many people <laughs> have uh, felt when they get punted in an MX-5 race or whatever. But uh, mate, given those figures... What's the story? What's the uh, secret to success, do you reckon? Well, the secret to success is trying to figure out the YouTube algorithm. Uh, Search engine uh, optimization is the way to go. So, you know, I had the advantage of being in there early. You know, in 2012, there wasn't that many people streaming because nobody had the technology to, uh, to do it. You needed a really good computer. And I didn't have a really good computer. I had a decent computer, so I could only stream in 480, right? This is October 2012, right? All right. Uh, Nowadays, graphics cards come with the capability to stream with just one button press. So there's a lot mm-hmm. more there's a lot more content out there. Um, so it it just makes it harder and harder to get noticed. So, in my opinion, the best way to do it is to have a set schedule. You know, you're online at a certain time, so people know to find you, and then to be as as interactive as you can. So anybody that comments on your YouTube video, you comment back. Whether, you know, unless it's like, you know, you suck, then then maybe not. But, you know, it's like um, somebody leaves a comment on your video that says, hey, Kevin, great video. Just comment back and say thanks. Right? That's that's all it takes. Simple. And the chat room, like any anybody who's streaming who doesn't I- interact with their chat room or have their chat room open is just doing it wrong. And then anybody mm-hmm. who streams who doesn't um, have any viewers, you should be talking like you do have viewers because yeah. people are going to be tuning in and, and, and out, especially on Twitch, um, to find the somebody they, they want to settle in and watch. And you need to be talking um, or else they're going to lose interest very quickly. So you need to 
every time you think something, you need to say it. So, you know, you you, you just may be thinking in, in, internally, I'm faster than this guy, right? But you, you need to say that out loud. You need to say, I'm faster than this guy. I need to pass him because that's entertaining to the viewers. Now, what it does is put a target on your back and people get pissed off when they go back and watch your videos like, oh, he thinks he's faster than me. But that's the, that's the way to get uh, viewers. So so for me, I had a set schedule for the Iris and Asker series every Thursday night at nine Eastern. So people knew to tune in. So that was the only night of the week I streamed because I'm an attorney and I was busy with, and I had children and stuff like that. So Thursday night at nine, you know, I would have be between YouTube and Twitch and all the other platforms I streamed at the time. I would have like 200 viewers live. And so the chat rooms filled up and 200 viewers back in 2013 is huge. Mm. So anyway, that's the, that's my advice. Would you say that this plays a big part into, I mean, it's something that we've spoken about quite a bit on previous podcasts about humanizing um, sim racing. Do you think um, that sort of leads into what you're doing um, with the, with the Twitch streaming, like 90% of Twitch streamers have a, or, or a YouTube streamer or even a content creator in, in general runs a webcam and um, they get to know your personality and, would you say that that's a that's a key part of the growth of sim racing? Well, you have to. I mean, everybody just copies everybody else. So, I mean, I'm not trying to take credit for anything, but in 2012, the top YouTube streamer did not have a oh, the top Twitch streamer did, did not have a a webcam. And I was like, "You know what? I'm going to put a webcam up." So, I bought a webcam and put a webcam up, you know, and it's really really bad. And then it's just, "Hey, well, this this guy's a webcam, then I'm going to do it," right? And it's the same way, just one copies the other. So, the um the uh, the betting that Matt Malone does like he he was one of the first persons to do betting and mm. it works right so now everybody else does betting right so you just got to see like what other people are doing and then um try to add, you know try to copy it and then try to add like your your like one little touch on it like don't do the exact same thing that everybody else is doing take what works and then add to it. Fair enough. So, Chris, is that advice good for you to grow your numbers from seven to maybe eight or nine <laughs> viewers? Yeah, mate. I've, hopefully. <laughs> That's good. That's good. We'll, so, we'll copy go what everyone else stops. is doing and just be good. Be fast. Yeah, can you I'll, copy that? Can I copy what Jared <laughs> Philsell's doing or Josh No, Rogers? unfortunately you can't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, um, Kevin, we've just had an announcement last week that uh, our 2018 and 17 uh, – V8 Supercar Online Premier Series champion Jared Philsell has left um, his the team that was dominating our series for quite a number of years and moved to another team that's also uh, up there as well. But um, just to kind of uh, put a little bit of light on how interactive our community is with our particular brand of racing, which is the V8 Supercar on iRacing. It is very broad and narrow. Uh, sorry, not broad and narrow. That's a bit of a uh, bloody oxymoron. Oxymoron, yeah. <laughs> you know, our audience is broad in that everyone either drives a Holden or a Ford. That's how broad it is. Uh, but they are both V8 supercars. And it's really quite, like I say, it's quite religious. Um, not many people venture out into being becoming fans of NASCAR or, or other series like that. There's a lot of GT3 stuff as well. But my point being... Um, We'd love to be able to interact a bit more with, say, the American audience, especially our particular series, um, and not in a selfish way. Uh, we'd also like to have it vice versa too, because yes. I know that the Peak Antifreeze series, etc., as long as as well as say Race Spot and what they do with the F1 series, it should be even bigger than it is over here, and vice versa too, because. Along with saying that, our particular series of SCOPS is the, the abbreviated format. SCOPS is probably, not, not to be biased here, but it is so extremely entertaining, so much drama in the actual drivers and what goes on on track and off track too. That's yeah. why we have the podcast to try and cover all that stuff. It's just not being seen enough, I guess, worldwide yet. But um, what do you reckon? What are your thoughts on, say, the V8 supercar community in – I racing, and if you do know much about it at all, and say let's let's bridge that over to say someone like Marcus Ambrose, who's of NASCAR fame in the states, but over here he's an absolute legend in in supercars. What what are your thoughts on how we can maybe cross paths and, and bridge those gaps a bit to kind of share the uh, the excitement of each other's series? See, well, this is, I mean, I would I will say I know the V eight uh, series exists. I'm a big fan of the the broadcast. I try to watch as many. Race spot and GSRC events I can, and you notice how I said race spot and GSRC, 
right? I'm not, well, I'm not watching Sim mm. Speed, formerly known, right? Um, but I know yes. it. I know I. It's online. But I know it exists. But I couldn't name any driver that exists there, and that's sort of the problem. With what I talked about before, like, so why is it on? Why is it on us to promote this stuff? Like, why? Why does everything fall on us? Like, why if if you guys have a if you guys have a great product, why is why isn't iRacing making it more front and center? You know what you know what I'm saying? It's like, kind of like they advertise a lot the. Um, Lionheart series, I think. I think that iRacing uh, makes the Lionheart series a little front and center. That's the IndyCar series, if you don't know. So I think they make Lionheart a little front and center because that's where they want to market to. But why don't? Why aren't they marketing to the to, uh, to the V8 cars? You know, I, are they? Are they? Do they feel like the market saturation is already as peak for Australia? Like they already got as enough members as they're going to get? It's kind of interesting mm. to me. Well, we don't, I don't know the answer to that. And look, I will say that we represent SimSpeed, which as you say, is formerly V8s online. We we represent them. Uh, We're not part of SimSpeed as in we don't make any decisions. And we certainly, what we say about SimSpeed is coming from a place where we are 100% backing and supportive of them, though we don't actually technically work for them. But we do know that there are many, many pieces in place and many things happening over the next year or two, which are doing exactly what you're uh, what you're, you're saying, which is trying to get the exposure happening, say, without the um, the help of, let's say, for example, iRacing. It can only do what it believes is going to be effective. Um, if it's not effective in, in the perception of iRacing to promote something like this, then I don't know. All, all we could do is, is, like, say, us as a podcast, to just continue to put our content out there. But all those things and decisions, hopefully, will get to a point where it is seen as something that's a bit more credible and worthy of, of promoting. But, um, yeah, I, all I can say is I hope we can do what we can do, which is just to put content out. But, yeah, Kevin, I, I, I'd agree with you, mate. I would fully agree that it should be promoted a little bit more. And, yeah, guys over there, please, uh, if you hear it, let's get it moving. Well, they're off to a good start with the iRacing esports network, and yeah. from what I yeah. understand, yes, 100%. And yep. the ultimate goal of that is to kind of make it a twenty-four hour network. Um, I just hope yes. it's not twenty-four hours of live racing. I hope, like you know, V eight race at a certain time where Americans just really can't see it. So maybe they replay it on the esports network at a more you know watchable time. Yeah. Um, yep. Like I said, it's just so easy now to stream. I had the Rutgers Kev in, in Invitational in 2013, 2014. There was GSRC, there was Race Spot, and there was Max Speed TV. That's it. It's the only people that streamed. Oh, obviously V8s, but the time the time difference doesn't work, right? So um, Max Speed TV was really one guy using the iRacing default cameras. Who just decided? Wow. Who just decided? Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm going to stream. So he didn't have any kind of real overlay. If he, if, if, and if he wanted to see the overall standings really, really quick on the on the screen, he had to hit spacebar, bring up the standings. You know, like like you would see. Like <laughs> it was it was not a professionally done uh, broadcast, but that was really the only options we had because it was so hard to to like do this kind of stuff back in the day. Well, now there's sim racing broadcast companies up the wazoo, and with uh, the tools that these uh, broadcasters have, there's a lot of um, good um, over overlays and stuff. And Max B TV has actually grown into one of the one of the better broadcasting. So all the drivers have pictures, you know, on the screen, all, you know, that kind of stuff. I I'm so I'm worried that the iRacing esports network is just going to turn into 24 sevens of live racing because. They pretty much have that already if they wanted to. And we're going to miss yeah. out on getting the replay shows, getting the analysis shows. Like that's what it needs. It, it needs like a desk uh, show, for lack of, a, lack of a better word, a talking head show that says, <laughs> you know, uh, here, <laughs> here is what happened on this series this week. Well, look, Kevin, watch this space. Watch this space because I do believe that Sim Speed. Uh, of course, formerly known as V8s Online. SimSpeed are really pushing the envelope with this kind of stuff. We haven't seen anything yet. Uh, last season was a bit of a growth season for the V8s Online slash SimSpeed Scop series. But this year, 
Watch this space because that kind of stuff is definitely not overlooked uh, by any of the guys at SimSpeed. Um, I think the Flat Chat podcast would love to be involved with that and are uh, involved in basically the humanization of the esport is the only way forward in our opinion. Um, the humanization yeah. meaning that there needs to be faces put to the cars. It can't just be a video game on a computer screen at, on someone's desk. It can't just be that. It has been that for a while. There's been streamers with their faces online, which is exactly where it needs to head. But to get to know the drivers behind the vehicles is the point of what we're trying to do. Some of these guys, like you just said, um, mate, that you don't know any of the drivers in the V8 Supercar Series. If you could only step into the realm of the Aussie New Zealand supercar community and start to understand the characters involved and see the drama, the the, the relationships between some of these guys, whether they be good or uh, not so good is even better. The drama is, I mean, I'm talking Formula One at times 10. It's just crazy. <laughs> but no one knows it except the ones inside the bubble. And that's the only way forward is to do stuff like you, you're saying – Talking Heads, a uh, panel type show, definitely not just sim racing over and over and over again, 24 hours a day where you just see those computer game visions on your screen because this is like just as exciting as a bloody, uh, you know, a NASCAR um, helmet punch up like you'll see sometimes on some of the broadcasts in real life <laughs> or you know like um whatever the stuff that happens the dramatics that happen in real world racing they are here they're not coming they are here but it just needs to be um exposed so that is what sim speed is going to be doing this year for sure uh, our podcast is going to be involved in that for sure and um mate with your hub with uh the warm-up lap, I'm sure that our uh, little community here would be able to give some content to showcase the wonderful world of Scops as well, if that's something that um, could be possible too, because, mate, it's a wide world of drama-filled action out there that's waiting to be unleashed. Well, I know you guys make great content, and the warm-up lap is for the home for people that make great content and want to be seen. So if you, so if you, guys, get, get, if you guys get something together, we'd love to have you on. Right on, yeah, Chris. Sure. Let's yeah, do mate. it. I'd be in for it, hundred percent. Well, I just think that our, our series over here is just is just special. Um, same yeah. with all the series in the world. I just I'd love to know about the drivers involved in other series, not just what I see on on the screen. So if we can do that from our end, and everyone else starts doing the same thing, happy days, guys. Happy days, I reckon, for the future. But um, yeah, yeah that's great. Just I just want to ask you before we kind of wrap things up. The Marcus Ambrose 12 hour, I just want to go back to that. Uh, the 12 hour debut of Marcus Ambrose in his first iRacing Enduro. Can we somehow get, um, I don't know, I'd, I'd love to try and push that or, or get people in our community to um, to get on board of that. I mean, iRacing Down Under is probably the biggest uh, fan page we have for our community. There's about three and a half thousand people that regularly see anything that's posted on there. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin, how do we uh, maybe maybe we can share some of that, that stream or something? I'd love to kind of promote that this this week for the the race coming up in a couple of weeks. That'd be great. Well, I'm going to make it a event on uh, on YouTube. I'm going to do that soon, and then that event will have a shareable link. So when that goes live, like people can bookmark it now. So that way, when it goes live, then they they can just click on that link. Now, unfortunately, we are doing the race that starts at nine in the morning. Uh, Eastern. So that is the middle of the night for you guys in Australia. And that's just the way my, my wife travels for work and she's gone all the week before Bathurst and she doesn't even actually get back until midnight Friday, Friday night. So, so if, there's actually two Bathurst races. There's one at 9 PM Eastern and 9 AM Eastern. Actually, I think mm -hmm. it may start at 8 AM. But anyway, one, one of them is obviously much more better for the Australia market. So, so, so unfortunately, um, we're going to be on at a bad time for you guys. But Marcos is going to be ending the race, uh, so he'll be on around oh, cool. one one to two in the afternoon your time. So he's going to do second. Yeah, cool. He's he's going to do second stint, and then he's going to end the race. Um, so that will be really good Aust Australian time. So I will share with you guys the uh, shareable link and. Check out the warm up lab on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash Rutgers Kev because it's just a rebranding of my old channel. 
So R U T G E R S. But if you just search Mark Marcus Ambrose I, I Racing in uh, YouTube, you'll you'll find it. We'll also put that that uh, link up as well. I, I was going to say um, I don't think. Uh, I mean, the good thing about the Australian uh, I Racing community is a lot of them uh, tend to stay up quite late. <laughs> if we if we say it that way. Uh, You'll you'll notice that occasionally at four a.m. five a.m. our time there will be Australian hosted sessions. Uh, it does happen. <laughs> so yeah, look, I, I think um, all all times of the night, mate. I'll definitely check it out, regardless of what time it is. We're also kind of spoiled here as well in iRacing to have particular names uh, come onto the service and do laps, set up sessions. Uh, this is coming from someone myself who used to drive on Gran Turismo and like, you know, just get a bunch of mates together and just have a, a you know, a lob uh, around a circuit. And then you jump on iRacing and um, it's not very, you know, it's not very out of the ordinary to see Max Verstappen host a session and just start blitzing everyone in an F3 car or on our side of the world, um, Kevin, we got uh, 2016 V8 supercar champion uh, Shane Van Gisbergen. He's a really consistent uh, eye racer he's always putting sessions up um heaps of them there's there's like at least a handful of other guys from our supercar series the real world one that that hosts sessions but i do think that there's difference here with marcus because of the videos i've seen the amount of engagement he has he's he's so comfortable speaking um in a way that is almost like uh teaching but he's, he's open he's not um He's very engaging and very uh, charismatic, I guess you could call it too. So can't wait to see his stream and how he approaches that twelve hour. Yeah, well, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a first for him too. You know, he's, um, you know, he's he. I don't think he's ever in, interacted with a chat room before. So <laughs> he has been in the chat room. I I, I I will say that. So he has watched live. But uh, yeah, I don't think he's ever had to be where he has to respond to questions and s- stuff like that. So it'll it'll be interesting. We'll make sure, uh, JC. We'll have to make sure the questions are nice and, uh, you know, I was uh, spicy. Say, some spicy questions for. Nah. <laughs> Sp- you don't have to worry about spicy. Uh, now, uh, it's all right. The, JC can give the spicy questions. I'll be like, "Woo, Marcus Ambrose, yeah, 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 mate, <laughs> cutting sick, Marcus, yeah." No, but you know what? Uh, we're gonna have to watch out though, because our, our mate, our God love our Australian New Zealand sim racing community. We are the best in the world, self proclaimed. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's a caveat. We're not always accepted uh, for what we really are in other parts of the world. For example, many times our chat and banter, as you might call it, is not taken the right way by plenty of other people around the world. Yeah, <laughs> and, true. Um, yeah. yeah, so Marcus is probably knows exactly uh, what, what is our heritage is like over here. But uh, sometimes for, say, a US audience or a European audience, they probably see us as being absolute morons and idiots from the way we talk. So I hope that doesn't uh, permeate through to the audience. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, eh? Well, yeah. What's going what's to happen is people people tune in and they ask their question and they leave. So it's going to be, hey, Marcus, what do you want to say about Greg Murphy? Exactly. And then, like, <laughs> do you know it? Oh, and then, yes, like, you like literally. You know that reference. How good? And then like literally <laughs> two minutes later, it's going to be, hey, Marcus, what's your, what's your opinion on Greg Murphy? Because it's a new guy that just tuned yep. in, and that's all people want to. That's all people want to know or talk about is Greg Murphy. So you, should, I, you know what I can see. That's brilliant. I, I, I can see him getting frustrated about that. That's that's my that's my pre pre. Oh uh, yeah, for that's sure. My prediction. Okay. Can, how about this for for a um, opportunity to maybe entertain Marcus, mate? How about every single time you come out, uh, uh, around Griffins? You just mentioned to the audience, oh, no. Mur- here we come up to Murphy's Corner <laughs> and coming into the cutting. And we just leave it at that and then no one can say anything. <laughs> uh, uh, Marcus, I'm on your side, mate. It was Murphy's fault. I'm going to have to get like a Murphy emote or something. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> we could just superimpose it onto the track right there on the outside wall, just Murphy's face. Oh, that's, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Let's do it. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Kevin, thank you so much, mate. We're, we're definitely going to post up all the links to all of your, um, uh, you know, the places where everyone can find you. And and I hope everyone out there listening can get a chance to jump on board and be part of this. But uh, again, mate, thank you very, very much and all the best with everything for the uh, warm-up. Yes, thank you, future, Kevin. Mate. Yeah, I just want to say if anybody listens and then they tune in or they catch um, Marcos around iRacing, just just try to be uh, respectful. He's he's just kind of like one of, one of the guys. 
and that's what that's what we should do. Uh, for from like from like what I understand, the Australian uh, sub forums and stuff have been really great uh, from from Marcos when he's when he he's under his quote unquote iRacing name. Um, so I don't really expect there to be a problem. But but if anybody else listens, you know, it's just uh, let's not fanboy him. You know, let's no, yeah, let's not chase him off. You know, because this is uh, this is a really good uh, opportunity for everybody. And if people see that, hey, uh, Marcos is doing it, I'm going to do it too. And there's going to be a lot of these former drivers that are going to be uh, re re retired and want to get their sim racing itch or just racing itch. That's what I meant to say. And um, this may be a thing that happens in the next five years. You know, these 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 people re retire out and they start sim racing. So I think uh, I think this is a really good yeah, o- sure. op- opportunity for everybody. Oh, that'd be awesome. How good would that be? That'd be amazing. And look, I, I would say that as much as painting the uh, future of uh, Mark as being involved in, um, you know, uh, forums and, and everything, I don't think it's as bleak as what I was trying to make out. I do know that everyone that races here in, the, in this part of the world comes in contact with real world drivers all the time. And um, it's pretty respectful, yes. I guess, if anything. Yeah, well, uh, it's yeah. kind of a, for the people that know, it's kind of like an open secret what his iRacing name is. Um, and nobody, nobody said anything. So, I mean, that's, that just shows me enough what people, people care. Yep. Well, that's great. And we'll keep that a secret. Hashtag everyone out there. His secret name is Christopher Kessel. <laughs> when you see it online. Uh, let me tell that's, you that, that's that if that was his real name, then, uh, he wouldn't be, no, that, that, no, it just doesn't link up. No. Yeah, he's he, he's a lot faster yeah, than Chris. He's a lot faster than that guy is. All right, well, let's wrap things up. And thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week as well. Um, Kevin, thank you very much. I'll put the links up and uh, enjoy, guys. Enjoy the Bathurst Twelve Hour, which is coming up in a couple of days too. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, everyone. All right, bye. Thanks for having me on.